So that's my intent to come. Um, I'm here to provide an update regarding the human remains that were located at Sheriat Road of Salisbury South on Monday the 24th of October. I can confirm today that those remains are those of missing person Jeffrey McLean. Uh, Jeffrey's identification was confirmed late last night uh, through DNA testing and thus we uh, are now aware it was him that was located at that location. Jeffrey's immediate family have been notified today um, of their identification and they've been assisted by our victim contact officer uh, as a result of um, to ensure their welfare due to the nature in which these remains have been located. I ask that the privacy of, Jeff privacy of Jeffrey's family uh, be respected and at this time they've asked um, that they don't want any media comment and they don't want to make any comment to any other persons at this time. When Jeffrey's body was located, it had been dismembered. Um, <coughs> it was located in a wheelie bin um, at that location in the vacant park and at this time we've only recovered his torso. Our efforts are now firmly focused on recovering the rest of Jeffrey's remains and identifying those persons responsible for his brutal murder. Evidence at the scene at Sherry Road suggests that some persons or a person was in the process of burying those remains and they may have been disturbed at that location. We've conducted extensive CCTV collection in and around the vicinity of Sherry Road. Uh, that collection is ongoing and we've commenced a review of that CCTV to identify the persons that are responsible for disposing of Jeffrey's remains at that location. We intend to identify the people that were responsible for Jeffrey's murder. And at this stage we believe there was more than one person involved in his murder and the disposal of his body. <coughs> As I said, we believe that they were gonna bury his remains at that location and that they may have been disturbed or they were just lazy and left his remains at that location. Jeffrey was 55 years old. He's the father of a 10 year old child. He had a keen interest in football. He's an Essendon supporter and he played senior football for South Wales. Over recent years, he's enjoyed playing golf and uh, was a regular golfer. Prior to Jeffrey's murder, he was the victim of four brutal attacks at his home address. On the 10th of April, he was attacked by a person with acid. On the 13th of April, he was struck with a log splitter and received serious head injuries on that day. On the 9th of May, his vehicle was set alight at that location. And on the 10th of May, he had a bucket of acid thrown on him, causing serious burns to his upper back shoulders. A number of these matters are currently before the court, so I can't comment further. But we're currently reviewing each of those violent assaults and uh, are in consultation with the DPP regarding that review. We believe that Jeffrey's murder is a direct culmination of those violent attacks that occurred on him in the months preceding his death. Jeffrey's de facto reported him missing on the 29th of August. We can confirm that he attended his home address at Leicester Street late on the afternoon of the 18th of August. But since that time, I've had no confirmed sightings of Jeffrey. I'm asking that anyone that has knowledge leading up to the events of Jeffrey's murder to contact police. The gruesome nature of Jeffrey's murder will have a profound effect on his family, his friends and his loved ones. And I ask anyone that has knowledge of where his remains may be that we haven't located today to contact the police, no matter how small that information is, to assist us and support his family. I'm also after anyone that has any information or saw anything occurring in Cheviot Street, sorry, Cheviot Road at Salisbury South in the early hours of Friday, the 19th of August, 2022, or anyone acting suspiciously in the vicinity of the vacant lot, the vacant lot at 23 Cheviot Road, between the 19th of August and the 24th of August this year. Specifically, there may be security patrols, shift workers, 
drivers that frequent that area that may have seen vehicles or other persons acting suspiciously. I urge them to contact Crime Stoppers on 1800 zero, and we will have investigators available between 5pm and 9pm tonight to speak directly to investigators. I'm going to take any questions. Has there been any vehicles that you've been able to identify so far in that CCTV process as well, of um, yeah, being able to take people also there or anything? Uh, investigations in its infancy. Obviously, we've located Jeffrey on uh, Monday evening. We've been investigating this matter for a number of weeks now. I'm positive that we'll identify who was murdered, Jeffrey, and those vehicles, the CCTV analysis in its infancy, and we'll continue to work hard to identify those people that have committed this crime. Why did you think it took so long for his departure to report him missing? Um, that's one avenue that we'll explore. As with any of these offences, um, we'll investigate uh, family, friends and associates to identify whether they actually have had involvement in the offence or whether they're actually innocent in um, relation to the offence. In regards to the brutal attacks leading up to, is that is there any indication that is one person involved in each of those or multiple people in each of those as well that have been charged so far? Yeah, as I said, those matters are currently before the court. We'll be conducting a thorough review of each of those matters and identifying what role they have had in Jeffrey's murder. Have you got any suspects that you've been able to interview or talk to yet? Um, we've got positive law enforcement inquiry that are occurring. Um, everyone today that we've spoken to has been willing to assist the police. And I ask that that cooperation uh, continues, especially with the nature of this matter. Have you been able to search any homes in Washington? Um, to date, we've searched one premises, um, but for operational reasons, I won't say that we've been. Has said there's evidence that it looks like they were going to try and bury Jeffrey's remains at that location, and it looks like they've been disturbed. At this time, I want to discuss why, um, because that's part of the investigation that's ongoing for us to continue to actually identify the persons that were involved in that. How close are you to identifying who may be responsible for the people that may be responsible? Yeah, as said, the investigation's in its infancy. Uh, we have a number of theories that we believe uh, relate to the motive. At this stage, we do not believe it's drug related, but I'm confident that we'll identify the people that have committed this brutal attack and brutal murder. Do you have any indication on where the other body parts might be? We've seen previous searches in the past in other areas. Are there other places you'd be searching yet? Uh, no, we don't at this stage. Um, and as I said earlier, due to the nature of this murder, We've recovered Jeffrey's torso. I ask anyone that has knowledge to support his family and come forward that may have any information, no matter how little it is, that may help us recover uh, Jeffrey's remains so that we can return them to his family. Are there concerns that there's any other victims at all? No. Great, thank you. And just generally in terms of the police and the With any of the any offence of this nature or anything that occurs, both for ourselves and anyone that's a first responder, um, South Australian Police has got uh, very good resources in relation to employment, employment assistance and support, and any members who require that are offered that to ensure that their welfare is uh, cared for. That's on Can I just ask in, um, in terms of a separate matter, what um, are the people that are involved in the murder of the from yesterday, why was major crime involved in that investigation and where is that at? Yeah, with any investigation where there may be life-threatening injuries, uh, major crime will attend with the forensic response section and provide support to the districts. But in relation to that matter, I won't connect further if you need to come in and need to go to Western District to get that. So there's no indication in terms of the extent of those injuries or what they were or the nature of those injuries at all for the uh, victim and accused? No, so we're currently providing support 
that support will be continued for the district, but I can't comment that investigation has been made for the district. Can I just confirm in terms of his grieving family, are his parents still with us? Obviously, he has a son, uh, a de facto extended family. So he does, he has one parent. Uh, he does have an extended family, but a 10 year old child. Um, as I said, the nature of the way that Jeffrey's remains being found is going to have a profound effect on not only his family, but any other loved ones and friends. And that's why we're having support offers to them through the Major Crime Victims Conference. Thanks, everyone. Um, if we do not vote, I'll just